Don't pick your skin, pick bandage. So what exactly is microneedling? It's pretty much a collagen induction therapy. It's a very non-invasive treatment using sterile microneedles pressed into the skin. By making these micro channels into your skin, like micro holes, your body is gonna be like, oh, there's a minor injury. So they're gonna rush all these white blood cells. So it's producing this natural kind of repair of your skin. This microneedling process can be done professionally or at home. With professional clinics, it's a little bit more invasive in terms of the size of the needle and it could require a longer downtime you can also do it at home and it could be safe if you're using 0.5 millimeters which I'm going to discuss today the only thing is when you're doing microneedling and you want real results you have to be consistent but you also have to be very very careful with your aftercare so this whole video is going to prepare you guys mm, okay it's morning now Julie went back home so I get to have a bit of time to record for you guys. I've got 12 main tips for microneedling aftercare to help with your progress. Number one, make sure you wear sunscreen. Lather that sunscreen on after microneedling when you're creating that micro channels. It's making your skin more sensitive to the sun rays. So just be very, very careful. The general rule is to wear sunscreen for two weeks straight right after microneedling. I just recommend you guys to wear sunscreen daily. It has so many benefits. Not only does sunscreen help protect your skin from the ultraviolet rays, but it also helps you prevent the worsening of your acne scars and hyperpigmentation. So when I don't wear sunscreen, the, the, my box scars especially, they start to widen. Number two, on the topic of sunscreen, try to pick a physical sunscreen over a chemical sunscreen for the first day during your recovery process. So with chemical SPF, it absorbs the UV light and then it converts it to heat for your body to release. So instead of that whole process where your skin can be highly reacted to it, try a physical sunscreen where it just acts as a barrier between your skin and solar radiation. And that that way um, there's no really reaction it just sits on top of your skin and after a day you can wash it off tip number three if you're somebody with really really sensitive skin and you've gone into the clinic for a microneedling session which might be a little bit more invasive because they use longer needles they might prescribe you like an antibody cream to apply topically that way it prevents your skin from getting an infection because as I said it's kind of like an open wound if you do use an antibody cream I highly recommend you to also follow up with a probiotic moisturizer or probiotic body kind of skincare line and this really helps reintroduce the good bacteria on your skin's microbiome so, so just follow the instructions of your dermatologist but also make sure you follow up with a probiotic because I think that information is kind of like omitted it's missed out not many people know about it because your skin's microbiome needs a good balance between bacteria and it's natural for your skin to have bacteria on your skin there's like billions and billions of like bacteria viruses fungi but once you use the antibiotic cream and you're destroying all the bacteria it creates an imbalance and you want to reintroduce that good bacteria so your skin's barrier isn't damaged number four try not to use your fingers to touch your face before and after microneedling it just there's so much bacteria in your fingers and you don't want to transfer that into your open micro channels in your skin i think sometimes when i'm stressed like i scratch my forehead and then i get really distracted when i do it subconsciously i don't even realize it but it actually increases your chance of getting a little bit more acne a bit more congestion because you're transferring the oils onto your skin and then you have clogged pores it's kind of like a a given but just be wary because sometimes you do it without actually knowing it, it comes out of habit so yeah Number five, if you wear makeup, wait at least eight hours. So let's say we're using the banisher and it's 0.5 millimeters. You need an eight hour wait time, recovery time before you can apply makeup. Because again, with makeup, it's not nutrient dense ingredients that your skin wants to absorb. It's something that you just put on top of your layer, not so it can go into your skin. If you're in the clinic and they use longer needles, your recovery time might be a lot longer. So you have to ask the dermatologist, depending on the length of your needles, how invasive it was. And also, if you're somebody who also wears makeup, please make sure you wash your makeup brushes regularly. For me, I, wash it probably after every four uses so once a week or once every two weeks and i know for some people they only wash it once a month but if you have acne prone skin and you're also looking to do microneedling make sure your brushes are clean it really matters there are different types of like acne that you get and if you're getting like these little little tiny clogged pores they're usually because of cosmetics number six you want to avoid like swimming pools saunas or like really physical activity that stimulates a lot of like excessive sweating now with sweating you 
you're getting all these excess oils out as well and it's more prone to clogging your pores so usually wait 24 hours to sometimes even 72 hours before you do those activities you want to just let your skin heal on its own without putting too much pressure on it if your skin is super sensitive you might see signs of like redness like your skin being really flushed a bit itchy and imagine being itchy and then sweating even more and then also using antibiotics because your skin sensitive and that, that just really throws off your skin's microbiome number seven is using a vitamin c product so with vitamin c it reintroduces that collagen production repairs the skin cells and the only thing is if you have really sensitive skin high concentration of vitamin c is definitely a no-no it can be really really irritating if you have dry skin dry skin means you're lacking that oil into your skin so i recommend the banished oil skin your skin's going to feel very nourished if you have dehydrated skin that means you're lacking water so you want to rehydrate your skin i highly recommend the vitamin c cream so because i I have very dehydrated oily skin I prefer the cream over the oil and that has worked wonders it really helps my skin repair itself at a faster rate and it makes my skin super super plump non irritating whatsoever so I highly recommend okay number eight is using gentle gentle cleansers in kind of warmish water you don't want to use like super hot water a lot of us love the, the feeling of hot water especially in the shower but that just ruins the outer mantle of your skin so warm to cool water really helps Gentle cleanser is just to cleanse your face. It's not to do anything like extra, so don't have actives in your cleanser. I like to use like a Cetaphil cleanser or the Banished All Mint cleanser. That's also good. The next one, number nine, is using nourishing products, whether it be serums, moisturizers, oils right afterwards. So think about green tea, licorice root, think about hyaluronic acid. That just plumps up the skin and it makes the healing process a lot faster. And then number 10 is one of my main tips is avoid using AHA products. So exfoliating ingredients like glycolic acid, mandelic acid, they're great, but make sure you use it before your microneedling session and not afterward. Your skin is already at this sensitive state where it needs to heal and you don't want to, again, stress it out. Oh, I don't have 11 fingers, but tip number 11 is avoid fragrance skincare. Usually fragrance comes down to preference and sometimes even though I have sensitive skin, I can tolerate a little bit, but after a microneedling session, your skin is so sensitive that you should not have any fragrance. It's going to further irritate your skin and you're going to feel like this redness. So avoid all fragrance. You can check it in the ingredients list. Usually fragrance are listed at the bottom and you can tell that that's small percentage. Um, and some of you guys can tolerate it, but by the general rule of thumb, you don't want to use any, any fragrance and just be very, very wary. Okay, the next one is my last tip and that is to be patient. Um, when I started my microneedling journey, I wanted to see results straight away and then I didn't give myself enough recovery time to microneedle again. So after you microneedle with 0.5 millimeters with the banisher, you need to wait for example a week in order to microneedle again. I had people on my Instagram saying they, they were microneedling every three days and that's a little bit too intense for your skin. If you cut your recovery time short then and you microneedle again, it's just causing greater harm to your skin. So try to wait it out and sometimes again if you have sensitive skin you might have to trial and error instead of a week you might need to give yourself two weeks um, and that allows the skin to go full circle in its healing journey and do better and that's all for today i hope you guys have a lovely day if i've missed any like tips out please comment down below don't forget to subscribe and big kisses Mwah. bye guys hey guys i totally forgot to put this in so this is post-production edit and basically these are my results for using banished products for over three years now i absolutely love it i used to have really purplish mark on my cheeks because i had like severe hyperpigmentation from my cystic acne after using the banished pumpkin mask and then the banisher 2.0 and then following up with the vitamin c cream i was able to repair my skin at a really drastic rate now my box scars are still very much there and i might need more intensive treatment but microneedling is a great way to kind of remedy your like scars and hyperpigmentation at home it's more affordable than professional clinics so yeah i hope this encourages you and i hope to find the rest of the video really helpful for your aftercare kind of tips Mwah. trying to cough with me it's your girl liz um <laughs> it's your girl liz <laughs> Welcome back to the Acne Channel. It's your girl Liz, aka Pretty Progress 23. I think you should speak.